It's a fascinating pack, isn't it? We're, uh... I don't think a grid like this has ever been seen at Goodwood before. Off we go. And one or two of the Pitaway Nippier cars. Leaps into the lead. Yeah, one or two of the Nippier cars, uh, which are lighter, can fly away at the start. But uh, this is great, isn't it? Just amazing. They're still jostling for position. The Moors in the middle there. Uh, one of the Hudsons on the outside. Little uh, Brescia Bugatti Type 13 the in there too. Julien Majoub and uh, the Delage locked in battle for second place. Duncan Pitaway scuttles away in the little GM with the big V8 aircraft engine in the middle of the pack. Mark Walker in the Darak. A little bit of steam from uh, the Austin towards the back of the field. Well, Duncan Pitaway has made a very good escape. He's about 10 car lengths clear of the Delage as they, of Sulecki as they come down to St Mary's. A big twitch the tail from Pitaway as he goes through. Nice exit speed from the Sunbeam with uh, Julian Majoub in third place with a very long pointed tail as he tucks in behind the Delage. But Pitaway not just using the benefit of being lighter to get off the start finish line, uh, but driving beautifully. In fourth place is number 11 is Huey Walker in the GM Thunderbug going beautifully behind. But certainly, as you can see, a great advantage at the moment for our race leader, Duncan Pitaway. Duncan, who also, of course, has the giant Fiat S76 that was a star of the festival this year. Thunderbug being chased by Mark Walker, who's pumping away, pumping up the fuel. There's uh, Annie Scaldwell in the GN. The Delage is getting much closer and pops in front of Duncan. He gets the Delage through to uh, Woodcut. Is Pitaway going to duck back underneath him? I think he is. Hasn't got the acceleration though, has he? It's going to be Selecki who leads the way in the 47 uh, Delage and he's fighting at the wheel of that car. It's fantastic. But Pitaway very quick out of the chicane. Delage with its big V12 engine, raced by Sam Clutton in the 50s in uh, vintage racing. Duncan is not going to let it get away. Wonderful mixture of exhaust notes going past the pits. And a wonderful rear shot there, just showing how much more nimble the Pitaway uh, car was as it regained the lead. So number 13 back into the lead, the GN Curtis and the Delage with uh, Marcus uh, Siletsky with a whole lot more to do. But as we saw last time down the Lavin straight, plenty of horsepower for 47. And he gobbled up, but Pitaway will work really, really hard to carry all the momentum he dares through the corners. Where did, where did Bruce, where did Pitaway get past the Delage? He got uh, into Madrick. He, he just uh, had. Oh, wonderful. He was able to tuck down the inside, just so much more nimble. He didn't trouble the brakes, did he? No, no that'll be it. Save on the pedal wear. And of course, a big, heavy Delage designed to go, not to stop. Great stuff. Pitaway, who, uh, for one of the historic uh, Grand Prix at uh, Monaco, drove his Bugatti all the way down uh, in convoy with another, yes. raced it at the event, drove it home. Drove it home. So they're, they're the first three, and they've really broken clear. Popping and banging behind them is Huey Walker. Might just see him flashing into shot. In fact, there he is in the background in a wonderful battle. Jordan Paulson really pushing Mark Walker very hard again. But for the second that running, look at the power that Delage V12 has down the Lavin straight back into the lead. But you know Pitaway is far from finished. We he burst into the lead at the start. He can do so again. We also wonder whether Julian Majou, there he is in third place, is just holding back. That was the pole sitter. Julian, always a determined driver, as we know from his performances uh, at the Revival. Point four between them at the end of the first lap. The order is the same, having changed uh, uh, just t having changed twice in the intervening lap. But back where it was, point four eight. Can Duncan hop in front of the Delage at Madrick? No, not quite this time. Well, not on the way in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. The, that's the key. But in fact, Zelensky has stayed, but he's looking over his shoulder, desperate to see where Pitaway is. Has to look not just across, slightly backwards, but down, because, of course, Pitaway is sitting so much lower in the little GN. What is interesting is that uh, Zelensky and uh, Pitaway have both lapped in the 151s. Yesterday, Majoub's pole time was 156, and Majoub himself is going four seconds quicker than yesterday, but it's not quick enough. No, it's not. He's dropping back a bit. Here comes Pitaway. What national colours are those on the uh, Pitaway car, Bruce, do you know? Not Angola. <laughs> it may well be. We'll work through the A's. <laughs> I think it's Somerset. <laughs> yeah, it's not Dorset, that's yellow and red. It's white. Now, uh, Duncan's <laughs> alongside the Delage. Can he make it stick? He can. 
Well, he knows he needs to make it stick because he knows that the Delage has so much more power under acceleration. But a great corner exit. Pitoy is giving it everything he can. He's got the kink coming up, but all the time down the straight there. You can see the Delage. Siletsky ducking his head down. Oh, he's looking down in the cockpit. No, he's got gear problems. change he's problems. Got a gear, gear problem. Oh, dear. Further me. down, number 10, Annie Scorwell in seventh is two places ahead of her husband in 18. It's going well. And there's some back markers here. Coming up to lap. Is that the gladiator? Delage is looks okay, perhaps a slight gear change problem, but um, but don't forget for the last two laps he's been ahead by the time they got down to Woodcourt and we've had to have Pitaway fighting back and that Pitaway we know is so handy in the little GN uh, Curtis, when he gets up to, to corners like Magic, the next corner he's going to reach, he will stretch that advantage on the run down to Ford Water, it'll come down again as the Delage uh, catches up, but again looking down into the cockpit for the gear change. Oh dear for Siletsky, and all along, he probably can't see the head looking down into the cockpit, but uh, Julian Majoub giving chase in the sunbeam. Yeah, pit away a 150.392, which is a terrific time. Uh, Siletsky still lapped half a second quicker than Majoub. Here's Mark Walker. His Travaz. Mark Walker belting past the pits. Oh. Number two the in the pits. Akela with uh, GN's own engine, own V twin engine into the pits. Bit of pumping, trying to pump uh, fuel pressure up. And the driver's surname is an anagram of the car. New. Well, we've had a change of lead again. Uh, Pitaway must have hit trouble because uh, we've got the Delage into the lead. And, and they're all together. Julian Majoub right on his tail. What happened? It was off camera shot. I couldn't see it from my commentary position, but coming down to the kink before St Mary's, uh, Siletsky was back into the lead. So we have a three way battle for the lead, just as it looked as though it was going the other direction. Is Julian going quicker or the others going slower? That's He's a very good point. Last lap 152, 6, so matching their pace. And Julian's. Um Bustling up to, uh, onto I, the inside at Lavant, he's got a, he's preparing himself for a move, isn't he? He's got I he's got those blockly tires up yes, to temperature. Yeah, as I done. suspect Julian's been holding back. Well, we'll see. Here's Duncan again. Pops Here he comes it past the Delage in a straight line. So uh, his Delage may be slightly hobbled somewhere. And is the Sunbeam going to come through as well? No. So let's get moves across, just dominating the centre of the road. Looks over his shoulder quickly to see where Julian Mazzuba is. There's a car Julian, ahead of them. Julian, Julian skirts the grass, yes, doesn't he? Yes, almost two wheels on the grass. Oh, and uh, uh, Pitaway may find himself uh, impeded in the chicane unwittingly. Well, for a race that really started to shape, uh, stretch out, it's really narrowed down at the front. And uh, Pitaway leading, we know that. Zaletsky in the Delage has the power to get back at him, but not as nimble. And Julian Mijou, was he just biding his time? Of course, the tyre tire manufacturer knows his rubber very well indeed. It's great to see the Sunbeam rejoining the battle to get up into third 1. place. 1.4 seconds across the, the top three. There's the giant Fiat Sotto Frascini being lapped, lapping the uh, big, big chain drive Bugatti. Delage. Oh, a little bit uh, sideways there. Uh, touch of the Mika Hakkinen's yeah. there. A little bit sideways for Soletsky and uh, Pitaway's made a, a few lengths out of that in uh, in traffic. I'm just wondering if there was a problem for Pitaway with traffic last time around it that he suddenly well lost all that ground and now yeah, Mizzou Mizzou just, into second. Why do second when you can do the, and the take lead. the lead? Oh, well, that's economy of motion, isn't it? Yeah, before Third place, the kink. second place, first place, before the kink and now will he pull away? Of course, when he gets the tighter corners, Pitaway will be able to fight back and if the Delage and Soletsky can lose the gear change problems or whatever has been slightly slowing it at points around the circuit. We'll be back to a three way battle for the lead. But Majou, was he biding his time, keeping his powder dry? But he's really pounced this lap. Lapping the Targa Florio Alfromeo. Beautiful line through there by Pitaway. Absolutely perfect. One arc all the way through Lavant. Now he's coming up on the outside of the kink and he's Sweet. getting past. He's past <laughs> Majou. Great entertainment. Now, can Duncan pop in front of Julian on... Uh, no, he... retains second place into the chicane. There's going to be a bit of traffic, the big Austin. Yes, way in the Austin number five. Doesn't hold him up, I don't think. No. Nope. They'll pop past on the finishing straight. Pitaway gets such good acceleration out in that much, much lighter car. And you can see the GN going back into the lead past Julian Majoub in the mighty sunbeam. In the background, Siletsky in the Delage holding on for, for dear life behind them. All covered by just, well, just over a second, 1.3 seconds on the start-finish line. Wonderful rear shot showing how 
the Delage, sorry, the Sunbeam is so, so sideways through Magic in unison with the little Pitaway GN alongside him. But this is a great race, isn't it? It's a fantastic race. It's little and large, it's odd and strange. Every sort of shape of car, and that's just wandering around the paddock, but uh, the car in the not Angolan racing colours really going very well indeed in second place. Duncan Pitaway, he will strike back. Odd and strange, Bruce, and that's just the drivers. I thought it was the commentators, but never mind. <laughs> Angola, of course, a hub of uh, two-litre sports car racing in the, uh, yes. in the early part of the 1970s. One GM pops past the other. One with considerably more power than the other. Oh, Silecki got hung out to dry there. He couldn't get around the back marker, so he's dropped off the tail of this lead battle. But a huge gaggle of cars up in front of Julian Majoub may well hold him up. And Pitaway in the far more nimble number 13, the GN Curtis, could use this moment to strike. But in fact, luckily, they've got through the first part of Lavent, the second part of Lavent, where the cars are ahead the of them. The kink could be absolutely key to them all. The cars everywhere. And look at the different sight lines the drivers have. Yeah. Some of them are about sort of eight feet up on these. Well, things. Majoub touched the grass on the inside of the kink there. He's had to come off the power a tiny little bit. Actually, no, Julian doesn't come off the power, does he? Anyhow, uh, still, Pitaway now chose that moment to go back into the lead, and the power of the Sunbeam should tell us they come down to Woodcut, but Pitaway can leave his braking as late as he possibly dares. Julian Majoub not giving any ground at all, but uh, oh. <laughs> lots of opposite lock from Pitaway and even more from Julian Majoub. Julian, Julian getting a bit of ground there. Uh, the Delage is coming back, held up a little bit by that gaggle of cars. Then there's some distance back, about another 18 seconds to Walker's one and two, Mark, and being chased by Huey Walker. 1.7 between the leaders uh, as a result of that auto crossing by, uh, by Zub. Solecki, 1.8 uh, away in third place, so uh, pretty much equidistant. Good to see Mark Walker up on the big screens. He's 1905. Derek, he is totally out of the elements. He's tucked down behind the steering wheel as much as he dares. But you can see every single movement that he makes in that mighty, a very, very quick car from more than a century ago. And no brakes on the front, very few on the back. So Mark doesn't believe in slowing down. Oh, sadly, our brush of yeah. yeah, just pulled off on the infield at St Mary's, just hopped out, well picked up by the camera crews. But uh, the lead trio, and they really are a trio again, are coming through the kink before St Mary's. The Sunbeam at the lead of that group, uh, Julien Majoub, two car lengths back is Duncan Pitaway, and regaining the ground lost earlier, Marcus. Siletsky in the Delage in the backdrop, but we're into the final three minutes until the chequered flag comes out. Who is it going to go to? It could be any one of these three, but for now, the Sunbeam of Julian Majoub are leading the way. With the Valvigate chattering in the, <laughs> in the air, isn't it wonderful? Are we going to get a Formula 3 style finish? Duncan? Three goes put away down the right hand side. He's got the momentum. It's so quick at that point of the circuit. Cuts across. Can he break later than uh, Razoub down here? He's got the lighter car. Soletsky's not uh, out of the picture either. So maybe here one comes more. comes Razoub up one, the inside. One more lap after this. Razoub takes a the side take, by side yeah, through the uh, first apex of uh, don't Woodcut. Forget, don't forget he ran wide last time. This time he had the corner. I'm, I'm quite surprised that Duncan Pitaway left so much space because Julian had showed the lap before. He's more than happy to come down the inside into Woodcut. But so. Now, onto the fight, starting the final lap. It's Julian Majou from Duncan Pitaway, the Delage of Marcus Silenski, tucked in behind him, trying to use the extra horsepower he has. But look at the acceleration of the lighter car, the GN Curtis, back into the lead of the race. So it's, it shows us Julian Majou in the lead, but we can see with our eyes that number 13 is back in front, Duncan Pitaway. But how long Briefly. will he stay there? Briefly, of course, because Julian is so good through Madrick. But that was Madrick 1, the second part of Madrick. He didn't manage to complete as he wanted. The Delage is coming back. Silenski right onto Majou's tail. May well pull past Slitsky's before they get. has gone through. He's, he's up to second. Up to second into the drop as they go down towards the kink for the final time before St Mary's. And he's got, well, he doesn't have any extra momentum because Pitaway didn't uh, slow down very much at all. But there is something rather slower uh, in the road ahead of them. Luckily, they've all passed it super easily be between the kink and St Mary's. But Pitaway's got a huge lead. Well, that's five car lengths in this race. <laughs> Siletsky in second. And Majou, will he fight back into Sunbeam? Of course, he'll give it a go. This is fantastic, into the last three quarters of a minute of this FSF Edge uh, race for Edwardian cars. Mazoub with that bubble visor elegantly 
tweaking the wheel, but Pitaway's made a break, hasn't he? And Pitaway is quick in the first part uh, of the straight. It's at the end where the big bangers come muscling past, or have done. Can Delage Power bring him closer to the little GN? Well, we saw that early in the race, the first three laps, he, he had a really good run at him, but we know that Majouve is the more attacking driver of the chasers when they come down to Woodcut. As long as Pitaway turns in slightly earlier than he did last time, he'll surely have the corner covered, but only just because Zelensky, a really fighting line into the corner. It's fantastic, isn't it? And up over the curb is Zelensky, a bit of tyre smoke from the right-hand uh, rear wheel. Into the go, into the chicane they come for the last time. Pitaway gets a bit crossed up on the exit, and he puts his foot down. He charges for the line, and he's going to get there, but no, only no, I don't think just. He is. is he? Wow! Oh, what a fantastic photo finish by 0.230 of a second. What Duncan a... Pitaway hangs on. Here comes Mark Walker throwing the. Uh, Big Derek sideways, he's going to be in fourth, fifth. Uh, fourth place, isn't fourth, he? Is yes, Mark fourth? Walker yes, in fourth is. in the Derek. Jimmy Walker, Can next you up. Imagine? Well, you really, really feel that Henry Hope Frost is going to have three very, very happy drivers to talk to. They all have a tale to tell. And there's Huey Walker in number 11. The little to the large of many of the others. And 16 is Paulson behind him in the Hudson. I think people watching this in various parts of the world can't believe how quickly, how competitive these ancient cars are and how quick they are. And yeah. how hard they're raced and properly raced. Yes, Duncan thrilled with his victory in the chequered GN. It's been a fabulous race, hasn't it? Look well, at that. well, they're Look being at... applauded Ooh. all around the circuit. <laughs> And I think Zelensky had to come out of the throttle, didn't he, he did. thinking, where on earth is this little I think whippersnapper going to go? I think that defines understeer followed by oversteer, doesn't it? Well, they're being wow. royally, royally received around the circuit, people waving hats, caps. So, so they should. What a race. Wonderful. That was brilliant. What a stunning race. And uh, hats off to uh, Duncan Pitaway with that, uh, that waspish helmet. Remember that GN uh, chain drive, no differential. The big Fiat finishes closely followed by Frankel in the Bentley.